Welcome back to Wanna Make Out a Little. <laughs> in, in, indeed. You breathe in a sip of your drink and immediately begin coughing. Before you can get a yes out, <gasps> lightning strikes a palm tree on the beach and it immediately starts a fire. <gasps> Cock blocked by the lightning. The activity ends abruptly as Claudette and Dwight usher the two of you away from the bar. Well, that's rude. The gang's all together again on the volleyball court. Seems like only yesterday you were sitting on the sidelines watching everyone get sweaty. <laughs> That's because it was. Oi! Feels like I've been here a lot longer than that, actually. It's so late that the sun is already beginning to rise. Better get this over, and over with quickly so that I, I mean you, can get some beauty rest. I do not recommend the eternal damnation of perpetual narratordom. Good thing you've really used your time well since then. Really getting to know the gang, the brain, the mogul, the basket case, the psychotic bunny girl. <laughs> you know, the four types of people. Anyway, everyone is gathered on the volleyball court for a new type of game. Pitch your dream date and see who Tara chooses. Alright. Who's ready for a round robin? How round are we talking? <laughs> no, <laughs> not to eat, Huntress. <laughs> Everything is food. Every killer gets two minutes to tell you all about the dream date they have planned for you tomorrow. In no particular order, which is a weird thing to mention, right? Because almost like the order does matter. Trapper, why don't you go first? You think you deserve it, even if in this case it's a subtle dig. Stop talking. <laughs> Trapper, <laughs> without further ado, would you like to make us all uncomfortable by pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable, not only in polite society, but within the narrative of this in-world event, and also the larger meta-narrative of a Dead by Daylight dating experience? Yes. Sometimes you just gotta say it. <laughs> well, yes, thank you, I'd love to. <laughs> so Tara, you're thinking of picking me. Well, this is your final warning. Pick me and be punished. And rewarded? <laughs> Tomorrow will suck. <laughs> Probably. I'm not an easy guy to get along with. I know that. But I can tell you this much. I'm hiding a secret on this island that will make fans shit themselves with excitement. <laughs> if you like Trapper, you're gonna love it. And if not, you're a maggot. Also, everyone, even confident, sexy ladies in rabbit masks, better stay the hell away from my yacht. Sounds like a challenge. Great. Huntress, <laughs> why don't you take it from here? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, I'm planning on a nice atmospheric breakfast on the yacht. Don't worry, Trapper. Won't even know it's gone. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Nothing. Go away. Then, boy oh boy, I've got such an adventure planned. It involves hunting for treasure. What kind of treasure are we looking for? Guess you'll have to pick me to find out. Let me tell ya, it's primo stuff. Her veil is black. Now if you don't mind, I've got to start preparing because it's clear already that you're going to pick me. Pick me, pick, pick, pick. Uh, confident mysterious, I like it. Sorry, anyway, Wraith. Well, uh, I don't know. I'd really prefer to just tell Tara privately. Um, I don't really know how that's going to work with these game mechanics. <laughs> what if you just whispered it to Tara? Wraith considers this for a long moment. Too long. That's fine. Without moving, Wraith lowers his voice to a barely audible whisper. Tomorrow, we have to find my bell. And then, I can finally tell you about what I've been working on. It's going to be really special. The kind of thing where we will really bond. And maybe, finally... Get off this island. And maybe, then, we can go on a real date. Ah, uh, you done? Is that it? <laughs> Wraith nods proud. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Hit a spirit. Figuratively, damn it, Dwight. <laughs> you gotta watch your words with these people. <laughs> Take the hit. Tomorrow, you'll spit in the face of God, die, and be reborn anew. You know, that sounds kind of fun. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> if you're not intrigued by that, I don't want you. <laughs> Go draw crayon out with Trapper or dig up whatever mystery mysteries with Wraith. I don't know what those guys do all day. <laughs> She's so sassy. Ooh, do you want to at least specify which god you'll be spitting in the face of? Oh, they typoed. I finally found one. All of them. <laughs> yes, bring them all down. Okay then, so... Hydrate tonight if you intend to hang with spirit. <laughs> 
And time's up, everyone. Gosh, you'll need to dream about these options so you're ready to choose in the morning. I mean, it's spirit. Now go dream about all these swoon-worthy options so you're ready to make the choice come dawn. Have a swell night. Did you two forget to, forget to mention something? I can't even talk anymore. Haha, <laughs> oh gosh, how could we forget? Before you run off to slumber peacefully, there's one more thing to do. No reality survival dating competition parody would be complete without singling out one of our contestants who is already teetering on the edge of a psychological break. And giving them a little push. Hold up. This has been a survival dating competition parody this entire time and I'm just now finding out about it? Come on. The signs were there, you just didn't read them. Welcome to Murderer's Island! It's now time to eliminate one of the killers. Uh oh. Oof! It's like a butchering, but it hurts even worse. You can't kill a killer, but can you break their heart? Aww! Do you dare to even try? Aww! You mean... That's right. Tomorrow, one of these sexy slices will not be eligible to take you on a date. Who's it gonna be? But why? <laughs> <laughs> Why though? <laughs> uh, because it's dramatic? Because it's surprising? Because it's a classic reversal of fate? And it will hurt someone's feelings. Someone dangerous. What's it gonna be champ? What's your thought process here? Trapper seems like he might throttle you in your sleep if you eliminate him. That being said, at least you'd see him coming. <laughs> Spirit could be anywhere. She floats. <laughs> and I hear she can disappear. Hard to track. <laughs> this is true. Eek! If you'd get rid of Wraith, he might cry. <laughs> and although I totally support normalizing men crying and being vulnerable, it just seems like he might be an ugly crier. <laughs> Huntress, she might pretend to be okay with it, but then you'll start seeing her behind every tree. Ha! <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, I don't envy you, boss. So, which sociopath are you eliminating? Um... <clears throat> If I choose purely on which killer I hate facing in the game, it's Wraith. I despise facing Wraiths. Huntress depends on the player. Trappers I absolutely adore. Spirit, honestly, I'm not a big fan of facing in the game, but she's fine. Like, I'll take it. So, you know what, Wraith? <laughs> Look, I'm here and I'm horny. <laughs> and I'm not really getting positive reinforcement from you, Wraithy Poo. <laughs> Please don't take this personally. It's just my opinion of you and who you are. <laughs> and what you're about deep down as a person and how I don't like it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, give me something, you know? A kiss, a wink, hold my hand. Finish telling me about this mysterious stuff you're obsessed with. Or better yet don't. <laughs> Wraith rises, taller than you've ever seen him, and calmly walks to the exit. <laughs> He's gonna ding ding in the night, isn't he? Before he leaves, he turns to you. When you came here, I thought perhaps you would be different. I don't know how my last bit of hope in humanity hasn't been snuffed out, but it wasn't. It is now. You are just like the rest of them. There is no hope of goodness here. The only thing I can do is try to escape. Or burn everything and everyone to the ground! He leaves. Pretty badass exit. Was not expecting that. Now that you've broken the heart of someone heartless, you should go get some shut eye. And don't worry too much about the broken heart you've left behind. Because of course they'll be receiving a consolation prize. They might not get to go home with Tara when this is all over, but they'll never sleep alone again. That's right. We're sending our eliminated player home with. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Their own mostly new <laughs> drinks the body pillow! Yes! If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I actually ordered one of these. I have no shame. I ordered one. I'm waiting on it. The next best thing is to the real trickster. It might not hug you back, but it definitely won't try to stab you. And how do we know? Because I've tried it. That's right. It's Dwight tested. <laughs> I didn't need that information, Dwight. Claudette approved. <laughs> I hope you sleep well tonight, Tara. You're my hero for what you've accomplished. Thanks. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you've done? No, not because of the guilt. I mean, knowing there's a legit homicidal maniac who hates you so close by. <laughs> Spirit save me. <laughs> how can you sleep tonight knowing what you'll do tomorrow? I don't know how you'll do it, but you better go before Dwight and Claudette come back and put you to sleep themselves. You know those two. Schedule, schedule, schedule. Oh boy. Things are livening up. 
Wow, what a crazy way to end the day. An elimination. I didn't even know it was that kind of game. Let's check in with everyone, especially with our loser. Everyone deserves a send-off. We'll see how things go tomorrow, I suppose. I'm not expecting anything. I tend to shut my mind off during hard times. I know I seem all excited and devil may care, but the truth is I'm really a pessimist at heart. That tends to happen when... Your mother is skewered by an elk when you were young. Yeah, how'd you know? Wild guess. It's also the only thing you talk about. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I think I saw a raccoon in that tree and I'm feeling peckish. <laughs> Leave the raccoon alone. I know I said some things when Tara kicked me to the curb and uh, I just want to say I'm embarrassed by how I acted. Not what I said though. I stand by it. I want everyone here to, uh, to burn. How would I say things are going? It's a matter of perspective. If Tara's goal isn't to oppress me, things are going poorly. <laughs> but if Tara's goal is to get themselves killed, they're doing an amazing job. How did you know? Of course Tara is into me. Why wouldn't they be? I'm thoughtful, beautiful, surrounded by a calming mist. I've also got great hair. I mean, none of those things can be denied. And since I'm technically dead, I'm extremely low maintenance. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I don't like to throw the term anime waifu around too often, but <laughs> if the body pillow fits, snuggle it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Speaking of body pillows, what? No, you're not a part of this. You don't get a confessional. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, man. I'm not a part of anything. You feel me? I'm not a cog in anyone's machine. I'm my own machine. Yeah, you tell them. Gosh, look at those abs. This whole thing is pretty cute, though. Charmingly low budget. Old school marketing vibes. Not gonna lie. Kinda wish I wasn't so busy right now. I'd definitely be down with a reality show style dating competition with survival elements. If you can't date Trickster in the sequel to this, because I need a sequel because there are so many killers, but if you can't date Trickster, uh, I, we riot. I'm gonna riot. But I got my new album, upcoming tour, finalizing the new sneaker line, producing a limited series on my life, starting a new social media NFT crypto, <laughs> he would be into NFT, and doing these private gigs over on IP Island. My dudes. He says my dudes. I say my dudes. Yo. <laughs> Let's hook up. <laughs> you gotta come check it out. IP Island. It's dope. It's where the real killers are hanging out. Fully licensed. No legal drama. Lawyers. Take a hike. <laughs> I'm gonna tell everyone that Trickster said that about them, don't worry. Whew, I'm talking your favorite established characters from all over pop culture that can't be seen on this island. Hell, you probably can't even mention them like ghost. Don't you say it. <laughs> Look, we get it. You're very popular and in demand, but we have a game to get back to and I don't want to get sued. Ghostface. Oh, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> Take that! Come on! <laughs> Whatever. I don't even care, I'm the trickster. Yeah, you tell him. See you around, Tara. You do, narrator. Oh, he's such a cheeky scamp. Um, I have a name, you know. You do? Yes, seriously, they do not pay me enough to deal with you people. Is it my turn? What? No, no, it's not your turn. You're sentient water. How are you even sitting in that chair? What's a chair? <laughs> It's the thing you're getting all wet. Ew, now it's gonna smell like mildew. Okay, rude. Fine, let's just get this over with. It's your turn, Ocean. Do your check-in. Check-in? I was just looking for the bathroom. <laughs> bathroom, are you serious? It's down the hall to the left. It's okay, never mind. Never mind? What does that mean? <laughs> no, not you too. This wasn't meant to be a confessional time for literally every character in this game. It's okay, we don't have to confess anything. We've just been working our asses off for two days straight and wanted to sit down somewhere. Yeah, you tell him, Claudette. <laughs> you, <laughs> this chair is wet. <laughs> yeah, I think the ocean just peed on it. You. How is that po- You know what? I don't care. You two are looking pretty pleased with yourselves. I've got something to confess. Oh great, what's it gonna be? You ate glue in the second grade. You cheated on an algebra test once. Watching Wraith get eliminated was the first time in this unending spiral staircase of pain that it, that is my life, that I felt even a modicum of joy. Every minute that I'm alive is a nightmare. This place, this sun, these sugary sweet drinks, it sounds fun for a long weekend, but for an eternity... 
The unrelenting rhythm of crashing waves and wailing seagulls. It's like a crescendoing song of evil that makes me question the very foundation of the universe. Why am I here? Why are any of us here? What kind of sentient being would do this? Do you need a moment, Dwight? Please, erase me from this existence. Make it so I was never born. Pull the plug on this experiment and let my soul be free. And please, please, get me out of this polo shirt. Okay, let's get you to bed, buddy. I don't want to go to bed. Going to bed means eventually I'll have to wake up. You're Dwight. That's too real, bro. That's too real. <laughs> Yikes. That was a weird way to end. Oh, well, what are you going to do? You let the camera roll long enough, someone is bound to say something crazy. <laughs> All right. Anyway, seems like everyone's had their shot to annoy me tonight, so hit the hay and get some rest. Tomorrow is going to be a doozy. Let's go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Soft sunlight warms your skin, nudging you awake. Also, you're using a killer crab as a pillow, which it's sort of okay with. What? <laughs> What's that? You don't know about the killer crabs? Oh, right. You didn't go on that huntress date. You really missed out. It was thrilling. Or I guess it would have been. You'll have to play the game again to get that reference, I suppose. Oh, I see what you did there. You pull on your beach attire and splash water on your face. Dwight and Claudette approach. Is that look on their faces excitement? Terror. You notice your stomach flutters with butterflies. <gasps> Someone's in love. Or you've been infected with zombie butterflies in your sleep. It has happened here before, but it's probably the love thing. It's time! Claudette gestures over to the beach where the killers all stand flanked by tiki torches. It's a scene very reminiscent of a TV show you used to hate watch with your ex. <laughs> Suddenly the message is clear. You are going to declare your affections for a killer in front of several other killers. Hey, isn't Trickster supposed to be here? We paid him good money to make some half-assed cameos in this show. I'm going to chew his agent out. But before they walk you over for your big moment, Oh, <laughs> hey, don't think we haven't noticed how kind you've been to us, Tara. Hey, hey, it can't be easy being thrown onto a mysterious island for seemingly no real reason, surrounded by terrifying killers, trying to manage your most primal impulses, <laughs> murder and making out. And you've kept a cool head and treated us, your friendly island hosts, with dignity and respect. So don't tell anyone we told you this, but... Claudette and Dwight look around conspiratorially. Just a little hint for you going forward. Don't try to go all the way with a killer who isn't into you. <laughs> You're not my supervisor. Relationships are two-way streets, and if you don't have a green light in the other direction, you might end up in the friend zone. I actually don't know which way spirit is going to go, but I mean, we're choosing her either way. The friend zone? That doesn't sound so bad. Where do you think you are exactly? Dead by Daylight doesn't do friends. There are killers and there are survivors and... I'm afraid we can't say more. Okay, so who's into me? <laughs> Claudette and Dwight look around conspiratorially again. Well... Ooh, she's into us! I've never seen Spirit open up to anyone like she has opened up to you. Yes! I've seen her open up the insides of plenty of people. But thankfully for you and for us, that's in a different type of game. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I've been murdered by spirit a lot. So, are you ready? Of course you're not, but too bad. We're on a schedule. <gasps> are we going to get the good ending? I hope so. All right, you make your way over to the row of hotties. Claudette and Dwight stand off to the side, hands behind their backs. It's been quite the 48 hours, but there are clearly sparks in the air, and I'm not just talking about this rusty chainsaw. Though, I do recommend staying away from those sparks. <gasps> Bubba. It's time for our newcomer to confess their love. Wait, I do. I have to do a drum roll for this. No, you don't. But who cares? Tara, who do you choose for your solo date? <sighs> Can we at least do the flower thing? Dwight, I thought we agreed to keep that between us. No, not that flower thing. The thing where the suitor gets a flower is a symbol of the contestant's love and affection. Oh, right, right. I suppose. But no roses. They're such a cliche at this point. Well, that's good because I tried to pick a rose, but I got an ouchie. <laughs> so I said all for these. You got an ouchie. Yo, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. You've done good, Dwight. This is a lovely bouquet. I hope Dwight saves some of those for Claudette. They're a thing, right? You're getting that vibe too? Just me? Sorry, sorry. You've got other things to think about right now. Tara. 
Who do you select to receive these flowers and spend the day with you today? Ta da! You approach Spirit, peering below the brim of her impressively large hat and into her haunting eyes. Spirit, since I met you, I've been enchanted by your presence. You've challenged me to be a better person and resisted the urge to show me the sharp end of your katana. For that, I thank you. I'm ready to take our relationship to the next level. <gasps> Is she gonna murder us? <gasps> And we shall, up to the eye of the dark storm that is our reality, to the lantern room of the Black Lighthouse. <gasps> it's time to see what you're made of, Tara. Let's go. All right, I thought it might be nice to start the day out on Trapper's Yacht <laughs> before we head up to the Black Lighthouse. Even if I kind of hate this basic tropical vacation stuff like yachts and snorkeling or whatever, it's good for you to see me in the sun a little bit at least. There's more to me than what you've already gotten to experience. I know that my whole vibe can be a little dark. The hat, the swimsuit, the plume of floating hair. This wasn't always who I was. I was a normal young woman once. Went to school, hung out with friends. I even had a part-time job working at a restaurant in town. And then, well, I know what happened. Your father, he... Yeah, yeah, he murdered me and I awoke as an undead avenger. That's not what I was getting at. Something else happened to me. I realized I needed to be seen. I don't even know by whom, I just... A lot of time, when you think about ghosts, they're these kind of see-through flickering specters. You imagine reaching out and having your hand go right through them. Ooh. Like that sort of thing. Maybe there's some warpy effect on the world around you, I don't know. Depends on which movie you're watching. But when I died, well, I dare you to try and reach your hand through me. No, really. That's not an invitation. It's rhetorical. Why did I end up this way? Who brought me here to this island? Who knows? I sure don't. I've got my ideas. Maybe what happened, if I'm being honest? Maybe I was granted a wish. Maybe this is me finally being something to someone. Something scary, something violent, something feared. But without a doubt, something. Maybe whoever or whatever did this to me thought they were doing me a favor. And maybe, last maybe coming up, I promise, maybe they were right. Maybe. Look, now you've got me doing it. Maybe they brought me to you. <gasps> it's so romantic. Something certainly brought us together. But I'm not exactly out here out there digging around in caves or dusting off antiques and trying to find clues and analyze their meanings. I do want to take this experience seriously though. I want to give the process a chance. It may be a dumb process and one that I have extremely little respect for as a person, but you just woke up on this beach with no memory of who you are and where you came from and rather than freak out and simply try to swim away, you're giving this a chance. I actually didn't know that swimming away was an option. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> However, the fact that you never even tried, I think that means you've got courage or an open mind. Or I don't know, maybe you stuck around because you like someone you met here. Hey, she gets me. We're in. Maybe. While the two of you were getting all deep and philosophically flirty, that's something I just said, the yacht pulled up to the shore next to the black lighthouse. Last stop. Everybody off. There were other stops. <laughs> Oh no, not of this trip. Of your life. Spirit rolls her eyes and leaves for the show. <laughs> she is not here for their crap. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. This was the only stop. Nobody here is really looking out for our fun, so we have to make it for ourselves. <laughs> but no, there are no other stops. Seriously, go. Race you to the poop deck, Dwight. <laughs> she had poop deck. <laughs> the ship doesn't even have a poop deck. Oh, it will. <laughs> Why? <laughs> As you disembark, you see Dwight and Claudette run giggling across the ship. <laughs> Too bad you can't date those two. <laughs> they seem to know how to have a good time. Yo, give me the survivor dating sim. I'd play the hell out of that. Uh, you arrive at the beach near the majestic black lighthouse. Its imposing form towers above you. A flock of birds circles lazily. No sense of fear or urgency, as if circling a corpse that hasn't moved in ages. I'm excited about today, see? 
Spirit places her wrist delicately in your hand and presses your fingers down against her skin. It's cool to the touch, but you feel, is that the faintest of pulses? <laughs> My blood is absolutely pumping. Oh, so what happens now? Now I show you something that no one has ever seen up close before. Oh, <laughs> well, no one who has lived to tell about it. Oh, we're going there. Spirit points to the top of the lighthouse amongst the circling birds. What's actually up there? Have you seen it? Oh, hey y'all, how's everyone doing today? Certainly seems to be taking the whole elimination thing well. Or maybe this is the opposite of that. Better not bring it up at all and just hope that he doesn't completely melt down. Spirit, save me, <laughs> take the hit. Ah, uh, hi Wraith. You saw she sure see me chipper today? Hmm, something strange is definitely going on with this guy. Well, something else strange. <laughs> something different to what's usually going on. Wraith takes a deep breath, sucking in the ocean air like it's the greatest air that has ever been sucked. <laughs> Tara, thank you. What, thank you for choosing someone, anyone else, to go on a date with today. Alone again forever. This is how I was meant to be. I feel alive. Um, you're welcome. Are you done? We're kind of, you know, on that date you just mentioned. I'm glad you're feeling better, Wraith. But like she said, we're in the middle of something. You mind? Oh, right, right, right. So, what you doing? Heading up to the eye of the lighthouse? I love it up there. You can really see the whole island from up there. In fact, Spirit, I thought you said no one else has been up there and lived to tell about it, but this sounds exactly like telling about it. Technically, I don't think Wraith counts as being alive. I mean, I don't maintain the cannon, but... <laughs> Spirit waves her arms at Wraith from head to toe. And if he's not dead now, he's gonna be when I punish him for interrupting our date. Hey now, we can solve our problems without our hair floating up into any menacing shapes. <laughs> Too late. I'll just be over here, running away. Enjoy the view! You know, I think Wraith was kidding about that whole being up there. Honestly, the view isn't even of the island. What you can see is mostly ocean on account of it being, you know, a lighthouse. However, that does bring up an interesting point. Regarding your... how do I say it? Spirit's hand floats up as she scratches her head contemplatively. You don't usually see her at a loss for words like this. What's your mortal status? Yes. Because despite what our lanky friend seems to think, the lighthouse is not to be trifled with. It's a beacon of death and suffering that brings doom to it from all corners of this world, if not further. Well, duh. You saw a freaking pirate ship seemingly travel through space and time only to crumble at the rocks beneath this spooky tower. But you decide not to point it out because that wouldn't be too romantic now, would it? I think I'm alive. I'm here, with you, walking this beach, feeling the water on my feet, feeling the sun on my skin. Here, with me, the spirit. Does that really make you alive? Why does this music sound like Kill Bill? Is it just me? Listen to that, it's just like Kill Bill. I'm like getting thrown back to my childhood. I guess I don't know. If you come with me up into the eye of the Black Lighthouse, you may never return. Is that a risk you're willing to take? Let's go. Because we have something. I won't deny it. I feel it. I'd hate for you to simply turn to ash. If we were to commit, right here and now, to figuring this out as friends, we could put that risk off for another time. Just be friends? Ouch! Is this her way of letting you down easy? I don't know if I want that friendship. I want you. That's why I chose you. Yeah, you tell her. I can't decide this for you. I can only warn you that it may not be safe. You might die up there and there's nothing I can do about it. Go up, maybe die. You take a deep breath and think about every particle of sea air as it travels into your body and fills your lungs. It may be the last time you have such a thought, but you feel strangely at peace with that information. I don't need another friend. I want something more. I'd risk my life for it. Spirit smiles a quirky, devilish smile. <gasps> yes, we're in! Right this way.
Inside the lighthouse is almost pitch black. It was seemingly day when you stepped through the door, but inside this place is like a void. The last thing you see as the final rays of sun leave you is a horrible sight. A petrified body laying on the stairs, reaching not up, but down as if it had been crawling. Watch your step. The things we do for love. <laughs> Yo, look at that sight though. When you arrive at the lantern room at the top of the black lighthouse, you breathe a sigh of relief. The light is out and seemingly defunct. Dust cakes the room as though it hasn't been operated in a century. However, somehow. It was just morning a moment ago, but now it's night. What do you mean a moment ago? We've been standing here looking out over the ocean all day. I've really enjoyed the peaceful time together with you, taking in the view, standing in complete silence for hours. It was kinda my perfect date. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> really? I don't remember that. I just called it the perfect date, and you can't be bothered to remember it. What kind of game are you playing with me? No, 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 no. I want to remember it, it's just that for some reason my mind is completely blank, but hey! I'm not dead. Or, you're already dead, and have been all this time. Haha, <laughs> look on the bright side. <laughs> hmm, that's true. Maybe we'll never know. It doesn't look like the light is working. Even turned off, the light has a power to it. The massive lens refracts moonlight through itself, a subtle sparkle that has a hypnotic effect. Maybe that's where the day went, staring into this light as the sun fell and moon rose. Thanks for spending the day with me. I really had a good time. That's it? Don't get me wrong, this is really cool and all, I just… I guess I don't know what I expected. I suppose if you thought you were walking into your death and nothing happened, it might feel a bit anticlimactic. Sorry. Anyhow, it's time to go. Yeah, let me just flip on the light for the staircase so it's easier to get down. Hmm, the stairs still look pretty dark. Maybe it… <gasps> Spirit is interrupted by a strange hum, and then it becomes frighteningly clear to you. That switch wasn't for the stairs, <gasps> it was for the main lantern. A lantern that is now beginning to power up. Uh oh, we're gonna die, aren't we? <gasps> the faintest smell of burning <laughs> begins to reach up to your nose. Oopsie! Looks like maybe that switch wasn't for the stair lights at all. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> now we see who is really alive and who is really dead, I suppose. It was bound to happen sooner or later. You slam your eyes closed, hoping that somehow not looking at the light itself will protect you. Not sure I see the logic in that, but if it is magic, it kind of defies logic. I want to see it, but well, I'm a little scared. Don't look directly into the light. Open your eyes and look only at me, and I'll keep you safe. <gasps> Take the hit! <laughs> oh no! Oh god! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I keep clicking on the wheel instead of the stop. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Perfect, nice! Oh gosh, oh gosh. <gasps> oh, close! Yes, yes, yes! Oh gosh. Ha! Oh, we're dead. We're dead. No, we're dead. Are you okay? You seem okay. I hope I haven't ruined this by pushing you to do something you weren't meant to. I was trying. <laughs> You're so brave. <laughs> Maybe not so coordinated, but certainly brave. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so lucky you'd put yourself through this for me. It shows that you're real. Aww. Despite your attempt to resist it, the incredible force of energy from the Black Lighthouse's lantern eyes... Lantern eye refuses to subside. No, it cannot be ignored, and it doesn't matter if you look directly at it or not. In the end, that was just a trivial game. This is life, and real magic. You stare at it now, and its power penetrates your mind. Oh gosh, <laughs> the void. Hey, been a while. How are things? Doing good? Feeling more dead or more alive? Yes. Yeah, love will do that to a person. Don't worry, it'll make sense soon. Okay. Ooh, you wake to hear Spirit's muffled voice. You've got a terrible taste in your mouth, like burnt hair. Ew. The air feels damp and smells like ash. It takes time for the sound to clear up, but eventually Spirit's words start to make sense to you. However, it's clear she's talking to someone else, not to you. <gasps> you know how sometimes people say, it's not you, it's me. Well, this time it is you and it's also me. <gasps> is she gonna kill us? 
I can't believe I thought you would change for me. I can't believe I thought what you were doing was a sacrifice. You never gave anything up for me. Well, today I saw what love looks like and it looks a whole lot different than this. Oh gosh, where did we go wrong? <laughs> oh no, Trapper! No, no! <laughs> I don't think you're hearing me, which is weird because I'm practically shouting. Nobody breaks up with Trapper. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> oh yeah? Fine. Nobody breaks up with Trapper. But I'm not doing that. I'm dumping- oh gosh. Don't you say it. Wait, they were dating? <gasps> I'm dumping Evan McMillian. <gasps> and there's nothing you or he can do about it. It's over between us, Evan. <gasps> Nin. I. Wait. She was two-timing all this time? <gasps> the reveal. Trapper turns from spirit and looks directly at you. You realize that you're laying on the ground of some weird tunnel, oh boy. I think that your shouting woke up Tara. Oh boy. <laughs> Say something, stay quiet. You know what, I'm staying out of this. <laughs> in an attempt to be as quiet as possible, you hold your breath and freeze in place. Sorry we woke you up, Tara. After what happened, you'd probably be better off sleeping for a bit longer. Things just got out of hand. How'd you know? <laughs> you were talking in your sleep, basically non-stop, until you woke up and then got quiet. Oh, sorry. What was I saying? I don't know. I don't speak Dutch. <laughs> oh my god. Why is there Dutch? You spread Netherlands. Oh my god. Yes, <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> I can't deal with this game. <laughs> the jig is, as they say, up. <laughs> they know you're awake now and you're going to have to deal with this awkward situation head on. Oh, clearly I shouldn't be here. You two are having a very personal conversation that I don't need to be involved in. I don't even know how I got here. Not here on this island, or here in this creepy tunnel. Whew. As far as this island goes, your guess is as good as mine. As far as this tunnel goes, we brought you here. Am I gonna get double murdered? We? You and Trapper? But... After the lighthouse light came on, you blacked out. On your way down, I thought you might have hit your head or something. It's hard to tell what blood is new or old around here. Either way, I wanted to get you someplace safe, and so I asked Trapper for help. It's not that I can't carry you, I just didn't feel like it, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. I hate anything messing with my shards. <laughs> Trapper, on the other hand, he loves nothing more than having an unconscious body draped over his shoulder. Well, I could have asked Claudette and Dwight for help, but I don't trust them. <laughs> Smart move. <laughs> but you trust Trapper. Like and trust are two different things. You might think Trapper can be a real jerk and you'd be right. But you get what you see with him, indeed. We brought you down here because we're the only ones who know about this place. It's part of an old tunnel network that connects different places on the island. What's up guys? Talking island mysteries, my favorite topic. I was just in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd pop in. Trapper, you said this place was private. Don't look at me, I didn't tell him about it. Half of the appeal of this spot is getting away from people like him. Well geez, I can see when I'm not wanted. So, are you three a thruple now, or...? <laughs> because I gotta say, I really didn't get the whole trapper spirit thing, but hey... If it's not my business, I don't stick my nose in it. We were not a thing. Nobody traps the trapper. Not with traps, or with relationships. And you do realize you're sticking your nose in our business right now, right? Wow, so hostile. If you don't want to talk about it, just say so. Anyway... This tunnel has some interesting features. If you head about 50 meters down that way, you'll find... Get out. Wraith looks around, just to be doubly sure that the trapper is address addressing him. I was just leaving. This island. It's a lonely place, which is great. For me, I love to be alone. Trapper, on the other hand, he's quite needy. And after a lot of pursuit, I finally let him catch up to me. And it became, well, I don't want to call it a relationship because somebody really didn't want to have that talk. But we were more than friends. Oh gosh, this is information I do not need. I dispute the events as told for the record. I don't pursue, I stalk, and I lie in wait. Seeing eye to eye was not one of the things we were good at. Oh gosh, I don't, I don't, don't, I don't need to know more. So, I hate to ask, but I did just look into a refrigerator-sized death lamp, so I guess I'm more of a glutton for punishment than I thought. 
What were you good at? I don't want to know. Keep it to yourselves. Well, for starters, <laughs> excuse me. I'll take that question. Thank you very much. If you know anything about me by now, it's that I'm on a quest for revenge. Exactly. What you might not know, Trapper is like a great classical maestro of revenge. <laughs> Trapper blushes behind the mask. That's one way to compliment a killer. Revenge against friends who had turned their back and betrayed him. Revenge against his father for making him into a monster. Revenge against a barista who wrote Ewan <laughs> on his cappuccino, knowing his name was actually Evan. <laughs> for someone who thinks about revenge as much as I do, Trapper is an inspiration. But they say, never date your heroes. Good advice, but I don't think that's the saying. And then you came along, Tara. You showed me that it's okay to be lost, to feel pathetic, to push on when you have nothing real to offer anyone. Is she negging me? <laughs> I'm not sure where you got all of that from, but okay. You held a mirror up to my own doubts and fears and showed me that they aren't everything about me, that I can embrace those things, but not be defined by them. You showed me that life after death can be more than just an obsession with revenge and mind-blowing sex on the ground in a dark cave or a dusty old tunnel. <gasps> I really didn't need to know. <laughs> Trapper nudges you in the ribs with his elbow. Gross. <laughs> Clearly, appealing to Trapper's better features has been a winning strategy for dumping his ass because he appears to be taking it quite well. This whole half ass dating show parody thing, at first I obviously thought it was a lame idea. What kind of moron thought there was an audience for this? But then, we spent some time together and I realised there's something actually, actual tea? <laughs> Real here, another typo, I found one. And I don't want to give up on it. I don't want to give up on us. Listen Tara, while you were knocked unconscious by some minor head trauma like a total weakling, Spirit confided in me that she has real feelings for you. I took it extremely well, naturally, because I trust her and value her opinions. Ha ha ha, Trap is the real Chad. That doesn't mean I trust you. Understood. If you want to get to her, you'll have to go through me first. Let's go. Oh gosh. <laughs> My passing Trapper's test, coming to Behaviour TV, Sundays at 8pm. Welcome to Trapper's Test. Answer my questions correctly or die by my blade. Oh boy. Question one. Oh boy. What is Spirit's real name? The one given to her by her murderous father, which she only lets her real friends call her. Din. Okay, you got that one. Don't celebrate yet. Question two. What lives inside Spirit? A dragon. Sure, everyone knows that. They won't all be this easy. Question three. Where did Spirit work back when she was a normal college girl before she was hell-bent hell on revenge? Restaurant. I know, to think I would date a waitress. Don't tell my father I ever mingled with the help like that. He'd be so disappointed in me. Question four. What's Spirit's favorite color? Black. Black. Are these questions largely superficial? Sure. Maybe I didn't get to know Spirit that well. Maybe that's why she dump. Maybe that's why it didn't work out for us. Who knows? Question five, the final question. You got this. According to Spirit, what's worse than being dead? Having unfinished business, regretting parts of your life, not being seen for who you are. Wait, wasn't, wasn't wor what's worse than not being dead was like not being able to move on? Like being stuck in this cycle and not being able to, oh gosh, what's the answer? What's worse than being dead? Is there a correct answer? <sighs> oh, yes. When I pitched Trapper's test to the suits at Behaviour TV, they told me there was no room in the budget for a new car to be given as the final prize for winning. So I killed them all right there on the spot. <laughs> While killing them didn't solve any of the budget problems, sure did feel good. I'm telling you this, A, to brag, and B, to explain why the only thing you're going to win is me saying congratulations for passing Trapper's test. Thanks. Not that it was some huge challenge, I mean, the woman obsessed with a giant light that shines in the dark has a chip on her shoulder about being seen? Go figure. You probably guessed, but rules are rules, even if I literally just made them up. You got it right. So, I guess I approve of you dating spirit. Yes, we're in! I never really cared in the first place, I was just hoping you'd slip up and give me a good excuse to wet my blade with your blood. Ha! Not today. Maybe I'll find a reason tomorrow. Ha! I'll see you then. For now, you two have fun. Wink wink wink. Trap her out. Yes, we're in. I'm sorry you had to endure that. What, five measly questions? It was nothing. 
Not even that, as ridiculous and unnecessary as it was, the whole thing. The waking up in a random tunnel and overhearing our argument, the, the news that Trapper and I had something going on and the stupid quiz, all of it. <laughs> Especially the whole Trapper out <laughs> catchphrase. <laughs> it's only because I actually like you. None of it would have happened if I didn't. And I like you too, spirit. Please, call me Din. We're in! Din. I didn't really feel like our lighthouse experience was completed. There was something else I wanted to show you. Oh boy. Alone, up in the lantern room of the tower. Oh boy. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, Tara. It's not that kind of game. <laughs> you can't stop me. What's that? Hold on a moment. I'm being told. No, wait. It is that kind of game. Disregard the gutter comment. <laughs> Come back up there with me. There's no place I'd rather be. Yes, we're in. You're excited to return to the lantern room of this lighthouse, despite all of the drama and worry that was previously a part of this place for you. More importantly, you're excited to be there with spirit, which makes it all the more crushing. <gasps> no! When you're interrupted by the arrival of Claudette and Dwight, why would you... Claudette. Dwight. Funny seeing you here. Wait, did I say funny? I meant tragic. Tragic? I don't think so. What could be tragic about a family reunion? These are always joyous occasions in my experience. <gasps> Before they can explain what that's even supposed to mean, the lighthouse begins to howl, a low, frightening sound. The lens begins to glow. Yo! It's coming back! In a now familiar way, you prepare to shield your eyes in case something bad happens to you again. Now isn't the time for any reality show adjacent shenanigans. Dwight! Claudette! Shield your eyes! We don't know what the lighthouse will! Now now. Please don't interrupt. You'd think after all of this time, you'd know that we've got your best interests in mind. Wait, what? No, of course I didn't. I don't think that I... Got wax in your ears, friend. I asked you not to interrupt. Too late. The black light flares. In the darkness, you see something horrible and strange. In the place of Claudette and Dwight are two ghoulish silhouettes. But before you can focus on them, the light passes and the two survivors are returned to their normal states. It's breezy up here. I should have packed a sweater. What in the hairy hell? <laughs> hey, watch the language. You shouldn't speak that way. <gasps> yes! Oni! Around your elders. Yo, Oni! Grandpa? Aww. My little Din. You're such a woman now. They grow up so fast. Ah, uh, what? Tara, meet Grandpa Kazan Yamaoka. Well, technically not just Grandpa. Technically he's my great, 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 great Grandpa, but that's a lot of greats <clears throat> to say in a row, excuse me. I haven't seen my little Din since I watched over her from the afterlife when she was just a little girl. And I expect you all to say the greats. It's a matter of honor and respect. Except Din, she can do whatever she wants, my precious little angel, but you, Oni stares at you with his demonic red eyes. You're pretty sure even the decorative third eye on his mask is looking at you. You mongrel. Excuse me. <laughs> you must treat me with respect. Or so help me, I'll be cleaning bits of your head off of my cannibal. Okay. A cannibal is, a, is like a metal baseball bat covered in spikes, FYI. Yes, thank you. I am very well aware of what one is. I'm not sure what a peasant like you is doing so close to a descendant of the noble Yamaoka bloodline in the first place. Rude. Dirk. <laughs> he called him Dirk. Claudine. <laughs> Explain what's going on. It's Dwight, sir. <laughs> and Claudette, remember? <laughs> we explained to you that you were going to come meet with your great, 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 great granddaughter Suda. And to give or withhold your approval on Dirk. <laughs> Five greats. <laughs> great, 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 great grandfather, sir. Your honor, master, sir. Dwight is a samurai, not a judge. This music is so Kill Bill. Grandpa, they must have summoned you here because they think you have great judgment and because if they summoned my father, I would be too distracted by torturing him for all of eternity to continue with the rest of the whatever this is. Show? Game? Experience? Ah yes, that makes sense. Only a man of my own power and magnitude can help. Self-important much. <laughs> Don't upset him. Nice to meet you, Kazan. 
Only my friends and family call me Kazan. Those who tremble in fear at my presence call me Oni. Okay. You're seeing a serious resemblance to Trapper in not only the sheer size of the man that Oni is, but also his attitude. <laughs> Apparently spirit has a type. <laughs> you sure you can or want to measure up to that? It dawns on you that, wait a second, maybe you do resemble Oni. Every time you've tried to look at your own reflection, however, you've become dizzy and confused. This definitely deserves more thought, but now's not the time to consider the fact that you might be some kind of hulking vampire with the first ever case of self-blindness. There's a massive samurai mad dogging you from two steps away. Well, you don't scare me at all, so I'll stick with Kazan. <gasps> Dominance asserted. Peasant. I realize now the true purpose of my visit is to extinguish your light. Oni waves his katana in the air at you menacingly, like great, 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 great grandfather, like great, 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 great granddaughter, apparently. <laughs> Hold up there, grandpops, not so fast. You're only supposed to kill them if they deserve it. First, you should get to know them a little better. Young people these days, always waiting to kill people, insisting they must deserve it. Back in my day, you did what you needed to be done because your nobility depended on it. In his day, for such an imposing presence, he sure is giving off serious <laughs> old man yells at cloud vibes. <laughs> you see, when I was a young man, we didn't have foreigners in our land. <laughs> didn't need them. We had an abundance of culture already. A little too much, if you ask me, but I don't make the rules. The rulers did exactly how it should be. You tell them. <laughs> Literature, art, commerce, theatre, fashion, poetry, puppet shows, ghost stories, courtesans, gambling, fighting, fine dining, fast food, public executions. What were we talking about? Spirit giggles at her great great, okay, I'm not saying all of those every time. At Oni's forgetfulness, you wonder, does she even like this guy? She sure hates her father, so... Listen up, old man! We don't have time for you to list every activity available to the samurai in the entirety of the Edo period. <gasps> Dominance asserted. Silence, peasant! You're showing, su you're showing your ignorance! Samurai were forbade from many activities that didn't befit the Bushido Code, such as attending certain theatrical performances, for instance. Sometimes, however, a samurai would put on a disguise in order to seek out entertainment. Now, I'm not saying I did that, because I had honour, and a body built like an entire castle that is quite hard to hide. But clearly, you have neither, mu you have neither my honour nor my physique. You don't even know about the ins and outs of the shifting rules of traditional Japanese samurai etiquette. You fool! Din, what would you want with such an uneducated admirer as this? Whew. You find it hard to believe that any contemporary person knows all that much about who was and wasn't allowed to do what leisure activities over 100 years ago. However, you're really not sure how to handle this massive demonic old man. Oh wait, I get it. Sweet Din, my beautiful descendant. You've invited me here to do what you're too kind to do. Oh gosh, is he gonna murder us? Bash this jerk's head in. Claude, Doris. <laughs> Doris. <laughs> Fetch my cannibal. <laughs> Din, wrap your robe around this mongrel's hands and hold them still. We'll splatter their brains on the beach. Together, as a family. Grandpa, no. <laughs> Calm yourself. That's not why I invited you here at all. In fact, I didn't invite you. Claudette and Dwight did. <laughs> Dirk. Ah, ha, ha, yes, sure. Wink, wink, wink. This whole saying wink out loud thing is getting out of hand. Him and Trapper really do have a lot in common, don't they? I swear, Tara has a good soul and the heart of a warrior. They fought for my love in their own way, faced down death more than once, and put up with their fair share of nonsense. Nonsense which seems to be endless. Can we, I don't know, wrap this up already? Of course, of course. Who am I to expect anyone to wait around for my approval? I've only been hanging out as a ghost and watching my bloodline be polluted by cowards and quitters for five generations. Boy, just come give your ancestor-in-law a hug. <gasps> Bring it in, big daddy. Sword drawn, Oni beckons you closer. There's no way he has ever hugged anyone in his entire life. <laughs> I think I'm good over here, actually. <laughs> Din! Now, push them my way and I'll split them in half. The sacrifice of this usurper to the Yamaoka bloodline will surely bring us back to life and set us back on the course of honor. You're so silly, Grandpa. We both know that only one sacrifice can get our family back on track. <gasps> Revenge on my father, your great-great-great-grandson, traitor to the Yamaoka name. The lust for violence in your voice. 
It fills me with cheer. <laughs> I love these two. I'll never forget who I am. I suppose if this is the person you want to be with, to go on your journey of bloody revenge with, I should trust your judgement. The strength inside of you blooms from the same cherry tree that was planted centuries ago by our shared ancestors. And if Tara ever treats me poorly, you have my word. On our family's honour, I will wield my katana and gut them like a fish. I mean, okay. Understood. A tear rolls down from behind Oni's demonic mask. Aww. <laughs> you sure you want to marry into this? Let's go. And one last word of advice, my dear girl. The father stuff. Don't forget it. But maybe stop focusing so specifically and obsessively on it. What he did, it was awful, but it was already done. Do something for yourself now. Aww, good guy Oni. Just my two cents. Be well, Din. I will see you again soon. Now let's go, servants. Clint, Dennis, <laughs> return me to the stables. I assume my dragon has been fed and tended to? Um, yes? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I swear, this is still better than dealing with Trapper's dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I was disrespectful of your great, 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 great grandfather. He seemed like a very special man. I realize I will never measure up to someone like that. A warrior with a hell of a fashion sense. I mean, that mask. Don't worry, I would never expect you to. Or want you to, really. If all I wanted was the biggest brute alive, I'd be down in Trapper's Cave right now avoiding his vintage bear traps. But that's not the life I've imagined for myself. This sense of abstract duty, anger at a world changing around me, a lust for blood, that's no way to live, and yet, as you now know, that is the Yamaoka way of life. Forever, I am cursed to battle against the dragon that lives inside me, or at least, maybe I was, until now. Call me the Dragon Tamer, baby. <laughs> Why did they make me say that out loud? <laughs> You haven't won this game yet, please don't ruin it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> I think we've spent enough time in this landing room. We should get back to the beach. Whew. The moonlight sets a romantic mood as storm clouds roll in and surround the black lighthouse. <laughs> you know, the sun might have set, but if we wait long enough, it will rise again. Whoa! Okay. Spirit removes her sheer robe, showing you her strappy black bikini. Her pale skin glows under the light of the moon. Maybe you could help me get a head start on applying tomorrow's sunscreen. <laughs> Again? I mean, yeah, of course. Last time was, well, I definitely felt more connected to you afterwards. To be totally real with you, I kind of just asked you as a goof, but I really enjoyed it. I swear though. If you tell anyone about this, I will not be labelled as a foot freak. <laughs> not that there is anything wrong with feet, it's just that something about that kind of attention really gets people talking. <laughs> steady, steady. Oh, oh, oh gosh. Ha! Yes! Almost. What do you mean almost? It was on. Come on. Ha! Yes! Ha! Ah! Oh, almost. Ah, yes! I am a god! Ha! <laughs> I can't read this! <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I just banged the table. God, that's so goddamn hot. I love feeling your hands sliding up and down my feet and between my toes. <laughs> my skin has never been more moist. <laughs> moist. <laughs> Get up here right now. <laughs> a towel to oh, wipe off your lotioned hands oh boy they they, they made me read that 
<laughs> Spirit grabs you and pulls you in close. Aww. <laughs> We're in. <laughs> Her lips lock onto yours. They're surprisingly soft and warm. The sensation is... Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Clouds cover the moon and you find yourself on the beach with spirit in complete darkness. Ooh, oh boy. Oh, uh, uh, intensifying. You can feel the narrow straps of her bathing suit come undone and come to life. Oh, okay. Snaking through the air, wrapping around your body, lifting you up off your feet. I mean, okay. Come here, you. <laughs> so this is what it feels like to fly. <laughs> Why? <laughs> A spirit pulls you close. This is getting weird. <laughs> you feel bits of glass press into your flesh. Oh, pain and pleasure mix and wash over you like the ocean. Salty air stinging your skin as you writhe against your undead lover. Oh boy. <laughs> the lighthouse howls. In the darkness, you're pretty sure that spirit lets the dragon inside of her take over. Oh boy, that got weird real quick. If it kills you, you're sure it will have been worth it. Whew. The clouds part just as you manage to pull yourself exhausted away from spirit. Well, my, there, there, there's blood on that. <laughs> a chunk of broken glass is lodged in your shoulder. When you pluck it from your skin, it drips blood. Sorry, I think this got stuck to me when we were, when I was, when, you know, I was having the best night of my life. <laughs> spirit drags her fingertip over the sharp end of the glass shard. Keep it. Okay, consider it a memento. All right, <laughs> I've got plenty more where that came from. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whew. You arrive at the beach to find Claudette and Dwight waiting for you. Yo, <laughs> we did it. Now is the time, Tara, to face your destiny. Actually, about that. Tara, can we talk privately? Um, not here. Maybe someplace else would be better for this talk. Oh god, are we about to get dumped? You know how we feel about schedules, spirit. Very strongly. And you know how I feel about you telling me what to do. Don't do it. Like I said, I'd rather have this talk with Tara privately. It's not right to do it here in front of everyone. You know, from my experience in upper management at my father's mine, I learned that if you're going to fire someone, it's best to do it in public so they don't freak out. Please, enough of the fire talk. Wait, you think, no, she couldn't be. <gasps> they seem so in love. Well, I mean, not really. Spirit is still spirit. Oh no, we're getting dumped. We got one night standard. But if I try to imagine spirit in love, I suppose, she hasn't attempted to murder Tara yet, so... Okay, fine, your guess is as good as mine, really. That girl is very hard to read. A word of advice, though. If you're going to end it, end it quickly. In my experience, the more pathetic the creature, the more annoying the final howls are. I don't need any advice. Everyone out, except for Tara. Hey! Did someone say final howls? That kind of my whole jam. That kind of. <laughs> So many typos. I can stay right, yes. <laughs> Especially you, out. Lame. Alone with spirit, you feel something awful hanging in the air. More awful even than the lingering smell of that cleaver body spray. Oh, that gag. I'm gagging. We're all gagging. For cleaver body spray. Spirit. Din. I. I don't know what you plan on saying, but before you say anything, just know that I really, really enjoyed my time with you. Getting to know you over the past few days helped me to get to know myself. For that, I just wanted to say thank you. That's sweet. You're welcome. And you know what? It's that kind of thing that shows me you've got a good heart inside you. Too good for me to carve out and toss into the ocean. But also, too good for me to love. Ah, we are getting dumped. I need someone who shares my interests. Someone I can connect with. Someone jaded and dispassionate. Only driven forward by a desire for revenge. I need someone who isn't so warm that I feel cold in comparison. I need someone who isn't you. Oh, we got dumped. Can we just be friends? Oh, I don't know if... Before you finish that, just know, if we're not friends, we'll probably become enemies. And I will destroy you. Friends it is. <laughs> I'm glad to have you here with me when I need you. But also not too close to me when I don't. So yeah, I'll see you around. <gasps> we got one night standard. Spirit starts to leave. Wait, what? That's it? That's how this ends? You're just leaving me here? I'm not sure I'd use the word ends, and for that matter, I wouldn't say that I'm leaving. But us, we're definitely through. The fact that you can't see that, well, it just proves that we never really belong together anyhow. Good night, Tara. Oh, what the hell? 
I just spent all this time on this island doing everything I can to get to know you, only to be told that I should just leave the chocolate factory through the side door? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> anyway, I said goodnight. See you around. Jeez. I'm sorry. What a bummer. Hey, why did she keep saying she'll see me around? Gosh, I have no idea. Aww, we got friend zoned. <laughs> and so my precious killers lived happily ever after, as they should, learning to love themselves first and foremost. Whilst trapped in a never ending cycle of torture of my design. Look at the little trickster! He's so cute. Wait, did I just spoil my true identity? <gasps> you made it this far, you should probably know that. That you'll have to play again to find out more. Goodbye, Tara. See you again later. And again and again and again. Forever. Oh, the meta. Well, that ended up being a longer episode because I figured it was getting close to the end. And yeah, well, we got friend zoned. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we still got the one night stand, but we got friend zoned. Oh, is there any way to speed up the credits? No. All right, well, that was Hooked on You, a Dead by Daylight dating simulator. We wanted to date the spirit. We kind of successfully dated the spirit. And then we got friend zoned. From what I've seen, there are like, there are eight endings. You can get like the friend zone ending and then like the actual successful ending for each of the killers. And then after you do all of those, you get like the secret trickster ending where he teases you with like a potential sequel or something. I don't know. I, I, I wish there was a little more trickster. No, oh, I'm losing my voice. I've been talking for so long. Anyway, that was certainly a ride. Um, I don't know how long these credits will be, so we're going to end this episode here. And I'm going to hope that there's like nothing after the credits, maybe, or maybe we'll just hang around. If there's nothing, then I'll just cut this right here. And I will see you guys in the next one. We'll be going back to like a, a proper actual horror visual novel for the next one. The one that I was going to play before this came out, but I couldn't put this off any longer. I had to play it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> it was certainly a thing. And it's on Steam now if you want to pick it up and date some of the other killers yourselves. Alright, well, I'll see you guys next time. See ya.